welcome to the two minute warning i am your host perry busby the two minute warning is brought to you by the west side gazette one of south florida's oldest african family owned african-american newspapers and joining me is my as the co-host is the publisher of the west side gazette mr bobby henry bobby how you doing my brother good evening perry i am terrific and getting better you know, it seems like every week there's something different uh, when it when it comes to technology and trying to uh, make ourselves presentable uh, on this on this platform. So it is indeed uh, a challenging yet a rewarding experience. But I'm cool, man. How you doing, Perry? Man, I am doing. In your words, I am doing good and getting better. Okay. Okay. Uh, man, this has been a, a fantastic week. Uh, just in terms of what uh, we have planned for this show, I am uh, just so happy where we've come from. I mean, we started this really as an idea. And uh, to our audience, I uh, just really want to say thank you. Uh, this platform has, uh, has really been a great outlet for getting out some great messages and thank you for responding no man i i am i am glad again perry you know and i know we may this may be redundant in in our conversation but it's because of you that we are able to step out in a on a different platform and we're grateful for that along with uh you know ariel and broderick and and and, right. and ariel is kind of under the weather right about now so we won't get a chance to hear her voice or perhaps not even see her beautiful face, uh, but we know she's there working behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, so she so, keeps this going. Yeah. Oh yeah, she sure. does. She does, <laughs> and, and we're, we're grateful. You know, Perry. Uh, you know, man, it's it's uh, every moment is something new. It's something different. Something's happening. Uh, I know it. I know it, it. It begs us to question where do we fit into all of this. You know, when we take a look at, at, at even even in the climate, you know, all of this heat is burning up this 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 atmospheric uh, uh, heat wave that's taking place. Yeah. Man. You know. Yeah, it, it's uh, it. This heat wave is is I, I really don't see our way getting out of it anytime soon. But man, I in fact, I read a story. Uh, the other day where they had a heat wave in Siberia hmm. of all places. <laughs> uh, and so that lets you know that things are changing around us rapidly. You yeah. Know, no place is safe. No place is safe. I know he said uh, <clears throat> it won't be water the next time, but fire. You know, and I, I thought at one time it, it might have been some nuclear stuff, man, but the way uh, these never before recorded uh, heat temperatures have been occurring uh, not just you know here and there but everywhere you know? right so yeah yeah man. yeah no it beg it begs to diff it begs uh, for us to really search for new ways uh to move forward because mm -hmm. some of our old ideas and some of our old technologies mm -hmm. are not serving as well uh especially fo fossil fuel it, it's uh it's hurting us. Oh man, definitely. Yeah. Before yeah. before we go any further, let let, let me do this. Let me um, offer our condolences uh, to our former Broward County Mayor, uh, Mr. Dale V. C. Holness, in the passing of his mother. Uh, so let's. You know, I just want to do that and uh, say, Dale, you know, our prayers are with you and your family, man. So yeah, you're, yeah. You know, you're a hardworking soldier. Uh, your family needs you now, bro. So yeah. God bless you. Yeah. 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 Our condolences and yeah. prayers for the family. Yes. Yeah. And, and Perry, you know, it's not only hot physically, but but you were telling me about a situation in in some little town in Alabama. Yeah, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if many have heard, but there's a little small town in Alabama, not far from Birmingham. It's called Tarrant, Tarrant, Alabama. And uh, recently at one of their city council meetings, uh, one of the council members stood up and shouted the N word uh, in city council meeting. And uh, it's caused quite a disturbance, but man, the story 
uh, at, when you get into it, gets even more peculiar. Um, Tarrant County, it, I mean, I'm saying Tarrant County. I'm thinking about Tarrant County, Texas. Uh, uh, Tarrant, uh, Alabama is 53% black uh, residents are mm -hmm. there. Uh, the mayor, who is also African American, uh, is uh, one as a Republican. Now, nothing against that or anything, but uh, and in fact, uh, the mayor, when he first came in, said he had to relieve the police chief because the police chief would not hire uh, black officers. He said that black officers were incapable of, of maintaining law and order with black citizens. He had to fire the city chief. But wait, it gets better. It gets Come on. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in the city council meeting, uh, there's been some back and forth. And uh, so this guy by the name of, uh, oh gosh, uh, mm -hmm. Matthew Bryant, I think. Uh, he gets up and he says, uh, yeah, let's talk about the N-word. And he says, do we have any house niggas in here? Hmm. And he uses the word. Uh, and so there's a gasp in the crowd. They say one woman got up, left crying. But Mr. Bryant's reason for using it, using the word, he said, was because when the city council was executive, was in executive session, the mayor called Councilwoman Veronica Freeman a stupid house N-word. Hold up. So you mean to tell me we got a brother and a sister, uh, the, 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 the Republican brother. Right. He referred to the sitting a councilwoman, a sister, as a Stu stupid house N-word. Stupid house n -word. Yeah. Right. And so and the so white Mr. Boy, Bryant, yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. Mr. Bryant gets mm -hmm. up in city council and says, I want to address this because this was done in front of the entire council plus the city attorney. And the mayor has neither apologized or admitted he was wrong for doing it. He said, and I did it because I wanted to get people mad enough that I could expose what the mayor did in harassing this council person. Wow, man. Okay, good gracious <laughs> alive. So anyway, dog. <laughs> like that's to, quite a story, man. That's more, that's more than quite a story. That's that's indicative of, of, yeah. of perhaps what where 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 we have uh, found ourselves at, if you will. You're right. Damn, we can't we can't get away from COVID. You know uh, the different variants. The, the it's, it's on the rise uh, because people are listening to propaganda. Pre people are, are are believing in in this 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 internet. Uh, uh, what do you call them things? Bots, robot. What do you call those things, Perry? When they bots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so we're we we are going stock raving mad, and and and, and no more the wiser. Um, Oh man, anyway, we yeah. got a situation we got to deal with. If the Cubans are doing anything down in Miami, uh, blocking traffic and, and just carrying on and acting up and not getting arrested, uh, and we got a governor who put in place HB1, uh, a right. bill to try to, what man, to, to, to run over black folk when right. they protest, but they allow yeah. other people to, to do it and nothing happened. Man, this is. Yeah, yeah, he okay. seems to have amnesia, but uh, the the wording of HB one because he did leave out African Americans because that was the tenant and that was the tone of that bill. Uh, it was specifically for black Black Lives Matter and for black protests, and just as you know, yeah. if, 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 as they say, if God has any sense of humor, which I believe. Mm -hmm. Now he's brought he now we see this being brought home to roots. Yeah. I was trying to find a, a copy of this week's paper. We got a very interesting article on the on the front page written by attorney uh, Rossi Williams as it pertains to that that incident with the uh, uh the Cubans and this is a very interesting read so please do that. 
Okay. All right, Perry. What we got going on for tonight, man? Sapase. <laughs> Nabule. But yeah. What we got going yeah. on, bro? <laughs> uh man, I am so excited about uh tonight's panel and tonight's subject. Uh, because honestly, it's a subject that I have to really admit, I know very little about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and if we would all be so honest uh, in terms of uh, Haiti and our brothers and sisters and, and our great migration and, and, and the great role Haiti plays in African-American development uh and, and to this day i mean it is something that i think most african americans are ignorant of and uh i'm just committed i just don't want to be ignorant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know you know you know Perry, i was sharing i was sharing with someone uh yesterday as and today as a matter of fact and i was saying well i'm not ignorant but in our geographical location in our with our geography being right. where it is in, in South Florida and during the time that I was in school, elementary school and high school, um, there wasn't a, uh, 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 there wasn't a, a class or, or classes on global uh, right. education as it pertains to black folk. So, so I didn't, I didn't find out a whole lot about, about Haiti. I mean, uh, uh -huh. if I didn't do anything on my own to try to find out, the only thing I knew about was Tucson the Overshoot. And, and, mm -hmm. and partially desaline, but but we understand that it's more to it than that, you know. Right. Uh, and they, they, Haiti was what one of the first liberated countries uh, in the hemisphere. So, right. you know, okay. Yeah. Hey, Ariel, yeah. you 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 said you have some screenshots loaded. What you want to you want to? Well, well, that was doing our Alabama. Oh. Time. Yeah. So yeah, I had some okay. screenshots of the article, but. Uh, we talked ahead of that. So okay. Okay. We okay. got ahead of our technology for once. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> you know, two old guys in technology. That's <laughs> always room for something funny to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, and and, and I and okay, I, I know this is a serious topic, and 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 I'm, I I do my best to be serious, but as I look at myself on the screen, it's like I'm coming in and going out, coming in and going out. <laughs> You know, you mentioned technology and old men, you know, right. so, but let's get these people on, man. Let's have this dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, let, yeah, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, our first guest, uh, Bobby, when we first began to talk about uh, the subject of Haiti and who we could bring in to, uh, to help discuss it, uh, it was a great friend of mine, a uh, well-known pastor, mm -hmm. uh, throughout this country. Uh, he is a pastor of church that, uh, if you don't know the name of the church, you surely know uh, the pastor who made it famous. And if you don't know the pastor who made it famous, you know his daughter. Uh, and uh, Pastor uh, Robert Smith is the pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, where the late great C.L. Franklin was the pastor and mm -hmm. Pastor Franklin's daughter was the late Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Pastor Smith is a great pastor in his own right, uh, as I said, known throughout the country. Uh, but when I first met Pastor Smith, he was one of the pastors that I uh, knew firsthand who was doing mission work in Haiti. And I, ever since I've known him. Uh, he has made multiple mission trips to Haiti uh, each year, and he has very great insight. And uh, in fact, he is uh, over the uh, foreign mission uh, ministry for the National Baptist Convention USA, as well as uh, the founder uh, for the Haiti uh, Mission Alliance uh, in Detroit. And so without further delay, Pastor Robert Smith. How you doing, Pastor Smith? I'm doing just fine. I, I thank you for this very, very precious moment in life. Uh, I know that I'll never, never, never get this moment again, so I want to make the best of it and get as much 
uh, truth out to people as possible uh, because the truth, well, let me say it like this. We need to get our story out because for too long we've lived by his story. I went to school in a little place called Pensacola, Florida. The time I was there, there were twelve to 15,000 people. I think there are 325,000 there now. But, you know, we had no say-so in our textbooks. Uh, we read what they gave us to read, and we were not allowed to go outside of that reading. Any teacher that talked outside of it was put out. Well, finally, around 19... Uh, 63 or 64, uh, the Department of Education, federal department, uh, outlawed anything teaching about hating. Uh, so the little plays that we had that outside teachers brought in, and of course they disappeared after that because the principals were in the hands of uh, the big folk upstairs, and when they didn't satisfy the folk upstairs, they were moved. So they were to move any teacher that went outside of them giving us their story and never allowing us to hear our story. Uh, so we are in much need of getting our story out to people. I want to thank God for you and uh, Brother Henry, uh, for his father and for all of those uh, who've worked hard. Many of our uh, publications disappeared uh, over the years. Uh, I came up, as I told you, in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, we had uh, The World, which was a very, very powerful publication because they did not take any advertisement. Mm -hmm. um, so Jackson felt if you take advertisement, you can't print in your paper what you want to print. Even if it's the paper from the Nation of Islam, when you had advertisement, you couldn't print what you want to print. He would not print anything uh, but what he wanted to uh, print. Uh, and of course, he couldn't last. It was too tough. Um, but he, all of his life, stayed in a one-room apartment, had one tuxedo uh, that he went to gala affairs with and got his story. Uh, but he got out. You know, our story, different from uh, what the papers in Montgomery were doing, uh, the papers in Birmingham were doing, because those papers made uh, our people and took them down when they got ready. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the problem uh, that we have, publication and money. We don't have our own power to publish. We don't have our own power to finance. And when that happened, people make you and break you. You can Michael Jackson, Jane Brown, B.B. King, and they'll show you like they did Prince. We'll take you down when we get ready. No matter what story you have, if, if you don't have your own publication and power to publish, then they'll kill your story. Uh, they made uh, the civil rights leaders, and they unmake them when they get ready. Uh, you've seen what happened to Jesse Jackson in the last, what, 25, 30 years. Um, they just, just washed him out. They, they just put all of his dirty laundry out there, put everything out there about his finances and whatnot. And after a while, he became a very weak voice because we didn't have our own story told by us. I think it's very, very important. One of the books that I want to recommend to your audience, every everybody need to uh, get James's book. Everybody, everybody, everybody need to get uh, the uh, Black Jacobians, and this is uh, about Haitians by a Haitian. Hmm. All the other folks writing on the Haitian Revolution uh, were not Haitians, but this is about Haitians by a Haitians who talked to Haitians to get the story. And uh, we all uh, need that book so that we can begin to tell our story, not just history. History is not, well, history belongs to the winner. You know, right. if you go to Germany, you get a different picture of World War II. You get a different picture of what was happening socially and everything. It, it, but whoever wins get to tell the story. But we need to know our own story. And our story is this. The Haitians are the greatest warriors since Joshua. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody from the 
time of Joshua, not even the Romans, not the Greeks with Alexander, nobody been greater warriors than the Haitians. The Haitians are the one that helped America win uh, the so-called American Revolution. If it had not been for Haitians holding back uh, the British out of Florida, out of Georgia, they couldn't come up from the South. If it had not been for the Haitians forcing forcing the sale of uh, the uh, Louisiana Territory, America would have been in, in bad shape. It would have been in, in bad shape. The, the Revolutionary War could not have been won without the Haitians. The Haitians are the greatest warriors since Joshua, since David. When God chose David, he knew uh, David was a whore. He knew David was a murderer, but he also knew he was a great warrior. And that's what he got him for, to bring sovereignty to Israel. And it's the same thing with the Haitians. They are the great warriors of all time. So, well, Brother Smith, they're such great warriors. How did they get in the shape that they're in now? We're different from Cuba, mm -hmm. who China would send things. The Russians would send things. We have had an embargo on Haiti when we choked them to death. Nobody went in to help them. Mm -hmm. Nobody slipped them anything. So for years, it was like eating on themselves. It was like cannibalism. Mm -hmm. The land and everything was destroyed because there was nothing coming from the outside in no kind of way. Mm -hmm. And this is a, they had the great fortresses. Uh, they, they, they had the great warriors. But they were an island. Now, the atomic bomb was dropped on Japan because we wanted to see how it worked. Because you could have done the same thing to Japan. Because when you can isolate people, you can destroy them. No man, no nation can live just to itself. Because we are Earth, we, we are a planet. Everything is shared with everything else. Everything is ultimately connected. So when you disconnect people, and this is what happened to Haiti, because nobody want to say anybody of color had enough sense to free themselves and start their own nation. Nobody wants that story to get out. Even today in 2021, nobody wants taught in the third grade and fifth grade that there were people who were slaves. They freed themselves and formed their own nation. Hmm. Nobody, but, nobody wants that story to get out. What, what would happen? How emboldened we would be. Mm -hmm. I got friends working in Haiti now, and I thank God for them. Uh, we're trying to buy 300 of acres, acres of land because we want to move from handout missionary work, you go, you take a suitcase, you take food, you take clothes, and you go, you take food, you take clothes, and you go, you take food, you take clothes. Mm -hmm. Well, it, 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 it does not work. After a while, the right. people just become to expect it is there. The gratitude yeah. Yeah. is not even there. Okay. But yeah. if you That's do, respect. yes. Yeah. Let, let's hold it, and we're going to bring on some others to share in yeah. on this. Well, you, listen, you knew I was a preacher when you invited me. <laughs> I don't know how to dialogue. I, know you, I, know I don't you're know how to have dialogue. All I know to do is preach. All I know to do is preach. But, 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 but Pastor Smith, you hold that thought right there because we we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna deal we gonna yeah, deal with yeah. that. We, okay, yeah, we let me bring on uh, on our next guest. Our, our next guest, is, and I had the honor of of, of working with her uh, uh, on a on a on a board. Uh, through uh, a hospice organization. So our next guest is Miss Shelley Timothy Paul. Uh, Shelley uh, is a Haitian American nurse and educator. She's a journalist. Uh, she's an African American woman and an HIV AIDS therapist. Uh, so I, I, I work with her in, in, in that field and, and also uh, seen her compassion as it pertains to her country. So if we can, can we bring on Shelley? And Shelly can inform us of some situations concerning Haiti and, and, and HIV AIDS and the whole some of the, some of that that aspect. Hey, Shelly. Good evening, everybody. How are you all doing? Very well. Just fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, Bobby. You just said therapist, but activist is. Um, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, but yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Haitian American. Um, I was born in Brooklyn. My parents are from the northern part of Haiti, Budmeli Monad, so the countryside. Uh, they moved here in the 70s 
and um, were able to start a whole new life. Um, I remember as a child, often people would think that my father was the super and he actually owned the building we lived in in Brooklyn, but he also had a full-time job. Um, the culture, the Haitian culture is a very hardworking group of people. And we were always taught that you earn your keep, you respect people. Um, and we were always taught, you know, to respect each other, respect, you know, the elders and so on and so forth. But can you all hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, but one of the things I found so interesting is that when we moved to South Florida after some you know, family dynamics, we ended up moving here in the 19, 1980s. When we moved to South Florida, the experience here was very different. Um, in Brooklyn, everybody came from somewhere, so you were treated pretty much as equal as anybody else from any other immigrant family. And um, when we got to South Florida, it was a whole different tune. Um, we found ourselves being ostracized and um, ridiculed by the Black Americans, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, it was the, at the time we had a number of people coming in by boats and people that were coming in by boats were mostly from the countryside. So there was a lot of, you know, country feel where people had to learn more about hygiene and people had to learn more about how to behave in um, more civilized um, settings. So we were constantly being called all types of names. And like any other cultures, we eat different foods and people would hear about the types of foods we ate. And it was one thing after the next, but the worst of it all was when the, the AIDS epidemic, that was just the worst of it. You know, media, um, like um, Pastor Smith was saying, is very powerful and the people who has you know, the, the power behind the media basically control narrative. So if you test five people and three of them out of the five have HIV and they're all Haitian, you can say, well, the majority of this particular group had AIDS, but that didn't mean, that didn't mean it was proportional to the whole country. But when the narrative came out, that's just, a, that wasn't the way it sounded. So then, then Haitians became those who had AIDS and it was one thing after the next, and whoever has the hand of the media or the force behind it controlled the narrative. So we, that kind of war between us as a, a country, us as a people, you know, blacks against blacks, Jamaicans against Haitians, um, country Haitians against, you know, city Haitians, people from this particular area, this color, this, it just kept on and on and on. And it's it's spread like a cancer and it's still here, believe it or not, it, it's it just, a, no, a number of us have been fortunate enough to be to continue to be enlightened, to continue to be touched by whatever we we pray to, and feel the, the the love of God that spreads between us and helps us to recognize between each other that this is going somewhere, and and God always had a plan. So it's these type of settings I, I always pray for and thank the people like you, Bobby, that I'll meet out of nowhere and just. You'll just open up your platform and just try to 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 inform more and to understand more, um, like you, Pastor, who just speak. You know, let it all out. Even though you know there's a lot of religious wars going on right now, things to keep us separated. Um, Mr. Busby, I don't know you that well, but Bobby speaks of you. So obviously, you're beautiful. If you can be around Bobby, because Bobby is a walking angel. You need a lot of beautiful around Bobby. <laughs> and I thank you. I thank you. And I, I'm so thrilled to be part of this discussion. I'm so okay. thrilled. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who's next, Pear? Yeah, our next guest is uh, Attorney Ruth Jean. Uh, Attorney Jean is a wife a mother, uh, a believer in the power of love, uh, and an attorney. Uh, she has a very interesting uh, uh, journey. Uh, when she was young, her parents, uh, even though uh, she, was, she was born in the Bahamas to Haitian parents uh, and considers to help herself a Haitian American, uh, but her mother, uh, risked her life uh, to enter, to enter the United States by boat when Ruth was just a young girl. Uh, she spent most of her life here in Broward County. 
where she went to elementary and junior high school, uh, attended Deerfield Beach High School here, uh, but she went on to uh, law school, became a lawyer in uh, 2006. And in 2016, she opened up her uh, law firm focusing on immigration law. And so without further delay, attorney Ruth John. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Perry, for that introduction. Um, thank you, Mr. Henry, for having me here. It is such a pleasure to be here. And this is, I think, such an important conversation. Um, <clears throat> as uh, Pastor Smith was saying, our people, our people are very resilient and our people are warriors. We're very proud to say that in 1804, we were the first country to gain its independence from slavery. And that is something, if anyone who's in South Florida knows a Haitian, you know that fact, but the whole country doesn't know that. Um, so I think it's just very important to, to start bridging these gaps. Um, as Perry indicated, I uh, was born in the Bahamas. I was born to Haitian parents. I consider myself Haitian American, um, although I was born in the Bahamas. And I grew up most of my life in Broward County. Um, I had a stint in Dade County and a little stint in New Jersey. But for most parts, I'm a Broward County girl. And I um, grew up in a time, like uh, Shirley was saying, where um, being Haitian wasn't very cool, right? Mm -hmm. Being Haitian uh, was not the thing to be. Now everyone knows sac passe, right? As, as, as Bobby <laughs> came in on the show, it was sac passe. We all know that, but back in my day, growing up in the 80s and 90s um, in Broward County, it was rough for us, especially what we call boat people. Um, I consider myself a boat person. My, my, my mom brought me here, um, as Perry was saying, at a young age. Um, I was uh, probably too young to remember all of the details, but my mother tells me the story all of the time. And we came here um, and we lived undocumented for quite some time. And this is the story of a lot of immigrants, but especially a lot of Haitians. Um, and during that time frame. We lived in communities that were considered um, African American communities. I lived right off of Sixth Trunk. I we melted. We 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 got to assimilate into the culture, right? Black, black um, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so we we learned a lot about the culture, but we also were, you know, different. I mean, my mom did my hair with the plaits, you know, with the braids and the and the bows and the and dressed us up, you know like Haitians. And so, you know, we got the Haitian body odors, the HBOs, the, you know, the eat cats, all of those things. Um, but I think the, the issue is that um, we didn't understand how much we all have in common as black people, whether it's from Haiti or the United States. And we didn't understand how much Haitians have actually contributed to the United States, like Pastor Smith was saying, in Savannah, Georgia, um, the Revolutionary War would not have been so revolutionary were it not for Haitians fighting in the Revolutionary War. There's a lot of Haitian Americans that are, have contributed to um, Black culture. W.E.B. Du Bois. Du Bois, where do you think he gets his last name from? His father was of Haitian descent. Um, the city of Chicago was founded by a Haitian man. Sure. So there's so much that I think we all can learn to bridge this gap and to understand that it's not Haitians versus Americans, but it's something that we need to come together and understand that we're black. I mean, 90%, over 90% of the Haitian uh, population is of African descent. So um, I think this is a very important conversation to have. I'm so happy to be a part of this conversation. I don't purport myself to be a, an expert on Haitian history. I don't know everything, but I know some things. <laughs> and so I, think, <laughs> so I think that uh, we can have a, a, a good conversation where um, we can you know, bridge that gap. Okay, great, great. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ruth. 
uh, right off Sixth Street. Yeah, I like that. That's, cool. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Our, our, our next guest. Yeah, yeah. Our, our next guest is 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 okay. Doctor Patrick Jabwin. I know him as Pat. You know, uh, he was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Uh, he's the president of the Caribbean Cultural Coalition Incorporated, and he has over 40 years of progressive experience in civil uh, engagement, community organizing, and business development. I could say a lot more about Pat, but come on, Pat. Come on on and join us in this conversation, brother. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much, Bobby, and um, I'd like to say good evening to everyone. It is indeed a pleasure and an honor. And thank you for West Side Gazette for putting such a platform together. As the previous speakers have spoken, everybody have taken, and um, when, with regards to Haiti, the historical facts, we don't have enough time to even touch on the subject. Mm -hmm. As you can see what Pastor Smith was talking about, and that on and every speaker has been speaking so far, what I like to um, more or less um, move fast forward is to the present time right now, what we're dealing with, what we are looking at as far as facing. And as we stated, yes, um, as Bobby mentioned, I, I was born in Haiti, but I grew up in New York. I left Haiti, I was eight years old. And at some point in my life, I was not Haitian enough and I was not American enough. So I leave that bicultural um, in other words, Haitian will see me not being Haitian enough, and Americans will first thing they would ask me, "Where are you from?" So more or less, um, it, it took time for us to understand and the educational fact for us to see right now. But right now, we are faced with a situation um, when we look at the, the humanitarian effort, the humanitarian crisis that is facing us since what has taken place in Haiti. And I know we're going to be touching on that based on the discussion. So that's why I don't want to have further delay just talking about myself, more or less. But more importantly, as far as where do we go from here? How do we continue to teach one another? As you mentioned, with regards to um, activism and um, the things that we can do, um, uh, that we could educate each other. Because we see sometimes, even though our story is important it's a priority but once other story comes in we get put in the back burner so to speak right now we still we're talking about the situation of insecurity crisis and haitians are still being deported to haiti as we speak <laughs> okay so this is real and i'm sure the attorney will know more about this um with dealing with immigration and so on and we're talking about a government right now that is not operational because of um, constitutional crisis. So we look at humanitarian crisis, insecurity crisis, as well as constitutional. So that's along the lines that I would like to touch on tonight and see what can we do on our part as Haitian American, as brothers and sisters in the diaspora, how can we help back home? Just like everybody else is thinking about back home and kudos to everyone else, but we could do it too. Let's not keep our silence because, you know, it is important that we keep the fire on. Okay. So did without further ado, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah. Did I mention the fact that that, that Patrick is a radio personality? Can can you see that in his presentation? <laughs> and I think I, I like that, Pat. That's good. Yeah. If I could, yeah. Perry, you don't mind. Let's let us let us go sure. since not since since uh, uh, Reverend Smith uh, has a a, a stoic history in in, in Haiti. Uh, what, what Patrick was saying, Pastor Smith, uh, can you can you can you delve in a little bit on that uh, a, a little bit more uh, on what he was saying in, in terms of uh, the disarray uh, in Haiti and, 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 and the, the outside influence, perhaps, that has caused this? Uh, he can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Unmute yourself, Pastor. There you go. Hey, somebody else muted me, Brother Henry. Let me uh, let me say this: there is nothing that can drive a person like hunger. Now, most of you have never been hungry, so you don't know hungry. You think hungry meant I had breakfast at eight and now it's two o'clock, so I'm hungry. 
But let's think about the person that gets one teaspoon mm -hmm. of what is called butter every day from the other side of the wall. In Port-au-Prince, most of us live behind a wall. Those who are in the wall many times get two, two meals a day of burger. If you get a good lift and you can get rice, then you're really on to it. But most of the time, it's something called burger, and it's mostly from the Catholic Church. But let me tell you about the people. What 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 what, what bring tears from your eyes? Different from here, there are people inside the wall who save a teaspoon or two teaspoons for somebody outside the wall. That can't happen here, Perry. Right here, I have 21 feeding stations, and everybody come in and get all they can for themselves, and that's here in Detroit. But they don't be interested in getting something for somebody else. Yes. But that's, that's how, that's how it, it, it's, it's the most moving place you'll ever, you, you'll never be more moved in life than to meet somebody that know what it's like to go four days, seven days without eating, or for them to have one mouthful. And that mouthful is given to the person that's got to get up in the morning and walk seven miles to get a 10 gallon bucket of water. And that person's not but 10 years old. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 a, it's a world that we can't comprehend, but people are driven by hunger. People, people say, why do the Africans fight all the time? Why do Haitians fight all the time? Damn, they're hungry. Mm -hmm. And nothing will drive you like hungry. Mm -hmm. you know, most of what we do here, we do it because we've been watching too much TV, too much evil have gone in our ears, and we've seen too much with our eyes, so we acted out. We had a situation here in Detroit the other day, road rage, and what happened? The guys followed the man up the ramp and shot him, and they said, why did you go? So, well, it's like the game on TV. We had to carry it out. <laughs> because that's what he's been growing up doing all of his years. He, he dropped out of school. He's sitting in front of the TV. He's playing with his PlayStation or his Xbox. He's playing uh, Cops and Robbers or Fury. Uh, now I think they're on Fury 9 now, whatever it is. But this, these are these are lessons to our people. What you watch with your eyes and hear with your ears are lessons. Mm -hmm. You're learning all the time. So if you watch the wrong thing, you wind up doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. But over there is hunger. A man is hungry enough that when one merchant, uh, a, a political adversary, attempt to take a tire and set it on fire, I'm going to give you uh, one American dollar. He's going to do it. Do it. But then when the other when the merchant says to him, I want you to pull that tie out and 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 put it out, I'm gonna give you a dollar. Now the two hungry people in the middle, one kills the other. The politician and the merchants are always trying to control. And 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 Mose was one of the first people who said, No, we're not gonna change government that way. We're gonna change it by the ballot box. You elected me, you'll get a chance to put me out by not voting for five times. He was voted on five times, he won every time. He was only given it because they were afraid not to give it to him. Because they ran him five times and he won all five times. But different from most people, he came in rich. How he got rich, I don't know. He's, he's not mulatto, but he owns uh, banana fields in uh, the Dominican Republic. And he can't he can't be bought out. You know, when Baby Doc left, he left with fifty two million. When Aristides left, he left with thirteen million. Uh, when um, I call him Pink, I call him Pink so much I can't think of his name. But <laughs> <laughs> you know him. Uh, he was a fun guy though. But uh, he left with ten million. But here's a guy that's got enough. And got so much power because you got to understand in the Dominican Republic, John Tippett in 1916 passed the law that if I trace your ancestry back to Africa and not to South America, I put you out of the Dominican Republic. The blacks in Dominican, they want to work, you know, Sammy Soso? Well, yeah, he's they, so -so yeah. now because he's yeah, white and he's got all new hair. He's just like uh, 
What's his name? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. He's done the whole Michael Jackson, all the hands and all. You know, I've been a part of bringing some 31 uh, Haitians here. And matter of fact, one of my little uh, Haitian grandsons came in while I was on. He's not afraid. He just, <laughs> he like the sun. He just came on through. I don't told him not to come through, but he came on through. Uh, but uh, many of them have bleached themselves so much. Uh, trying to get rid of their dark skin because they've been told there's something wrong with it. You know, they they they, they don't. Want my my my, uh, my son uh, uh, married. Matter of fact, two times. <laughs> so <laughs> he's really really like. But the hunger is the problem. If we solve the hunger problem, we solve a whole lot of other problems. Okay, how did this hunger? How how did how did this? I mean, I I I've read a little bit about. Uh, uh, Haiti in, in this struggle from 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 conflict from I what it was what's that the president that we had back in Dwight was it Eisenhower Eisenhower yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so and so 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 this thing this has been it seemed like a uh, an orchestrated effort uh, to actually destroy this country or keep it so suppressed you know and, well, here's the Monroe Doctrine here's the Monroe Doctrine. Yeah. The Monroe Doctrine has the United States said to Britain and especially to France, we will keep them suppressed. You don't have to come into this hemisphere. The Western Hemisphere is ours. We will break up the United uh, Caribbean so they, they won't think of themselves as a country. Uh, they will think of themselves as Bohemians and Jamaicans and whatever else. They won't think of themselves as a people. We keep that broke up. The, the council or the Caribbean is headed by Canadians. Get that. But the way uh, Haiti has come to its starvation and everything else is the fact that the United States job is to keep Haiti suppressed. We invaded in uh, 1918 and we invaded again in uh, 1931. And then the most recent invasion, we didn't go in just as the United States, we went in as the United Nations. Okay. And so now it's time to go back, and who knows? Who knows why uh, uh, Moses was killed? Was, was it to give an excuse for going back? That's important. One of, one of the viewers is asking the question. Mr. Looney Robinson says, uh, the Haitian story, tribulations must be told preferably by the people of Haiti. Why was President Moise assassinated? Why is there so much tribalism and gang violence? What can America do to positively impact Haiti? Pat, take a stab at that. And then we're going to hear from you. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, um, there are so many questions without answers right now that is still being unfolded with regards to Haiti. One of the things that I say, as far as assassination of a, a president, a head of state, it does not just happen without intelligence and without the support of other powers. Haiti right now is being run by uh, a core group, which you would say with regards to foreign um, nationals. The core group consists of countries as the United, the UN, um, United States ambassadors, um, Brazil, Spain, France, um, the European Union. You're looking at representative from the United Nations, um, the Organization of um, American States, Germany, and so you get the picture as far as, yeah. so the embargo that had been in Haiti for many years, why it had gotten to the point that it is now. And as the pastor mentioned, with regards to more years coming in and couldn't be bought the same way, that could be one of the reasons. We don't know exactly why. And the party that's been there for the past nine years is the same party that he was serving, but he was trying to do something different with regards to, so you still had, that tug of war going between the merchants and the politician, as Pastor Smith had mentioned. So right now, with regards to when you're looking at the, um, I find it hard to understand when I just mentioned about the core group of intelligence not knowing that this was about to take place. Because there is no way that certain things happen around the world without the blessing or the authority of certain power and if it just happened that way that means we're in a vacuum we, we we are considering there's no way that the united states and some of the other foreign powers 
would not have known through intelligence that something like this was about to take place. And somehow it, it took place. Mm -hmm. So with regards to as far as understanding, we still have to say, okay, where do we go from here as far as establishing um, security? Because if a president of a state could, of a country could be killed at home in bed, you know that no other citizens are safe wherever they may be because you're talking about the gang violence and so on and and i'm glad the pastor mentioned i'll piggyback on that with regards to the poverty level there is people will just do anything and they have been bought left and right my uh my recent um memory i went to haiti about four years ago and i've experienced with regards to actually the corruption you're looking at um, government officials that ran their section just like as their mobsters. The way that the whole attitude of um, intimidation, there is, and they knew that they could do certain things and law enforcement is not gonna do anything to them. So this was the type of thing. So this is again, with the blessing of others when they know that, hey, we don't have to worry about us doing anything because we're gonna continue to have you do unto others and do unto each other, that's all, and keeping you intact. And this is where we stand right now with regards to this country, as I mentioned before. You have a parliament that have not been in, um, in, um, in session since January 2020. You have a prime minister that, um, as we speak today, they were just, um, I guess there's a new prime minister coming in. By the way, Bobby, your family is, on, in, is, is, is in charge now because the Henry family. But it just so happened that the new prime minister's name is Ariel Henry. Oh, Ariel, you hear this? Yes. <laughs> yes, Ariel Henry. Okay. And um, But um, I'm making light of the situation, right, but right, right. with regards to... So you had a situation that a tug of war between an outgoing prime minister, interim prime minister, and the new prime minister. So even that, they had to sit down and discuss and say, okay, who's gonna be in charge here? Because they both were saying they're in charge. Mm -hmm. So this is something developing. Right now, the people, um, from last I checked from other folks down in Haiti today, with some other people that, in Okab, Cape Haitian, that the people are demanding justice before the burial of the president. Wow. The funeral is tomorrow. Wow. So there are certain issues that we are looking at, which is real. And when we're talking about insecurity, unless United States, what can we do? Right now, there's a Cuba situation. There's that the Haitian situation no longer becomes a priority the same way. But we are the neighbors right there. So if anything happens, guess where it's going to be affected first? Right here in South Florida. And our brothers and sisters need to understand that we need to stick together and welcome one another and see what can we do because we have more in common than we have differences. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have to work towards. Good point, good point. Uh, Ruth, you know, as from, 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 from where you sit as an immigration attorney, uh, uh, how, can, how, how can you and what are you doing to uh, address this or how are you seeing this particular uh, situation with immigration and, and, and our Haitian brothers and sisters? Well, you know, from an immigration attorney's perspective, I can say that this obviously um, will impact immigration. Um, we know after, right after the assassination, um, there were Haitians at the American embassy by the dozens requesting asylum. Um, you will probably see an influx of, of Haitians um, coming in by boat, like the way I came in, because the country is no longer, it, it hasn't been safe for a long time. Even before uh, President Moise was assassinated, the country has been upside down. And, you know, there's differences of opinion as to what President Moise did or didn't do. And like I said before, I don't know everything. Um, I just know that in terms of um, prior to his assassination, he had a lot of enemies, whether they were the people 
that were holding all of the power in terms of economic power because um, Haiti, just like a lot of other countries, there's a set few number of people who have the majority of the economic power. Mm -hmm. So that aspect obviously is a, a, a large consideration as to whether or not that was the reason why he was killed because he canceled a lot of contracts, um, was trying to do things for the people. Some people would say that was the reason why he was assassinated. Um, other people may say he had other enemies in other places. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it really is, I, I have been like Inspector Gadget on this thing. I, it's just reading numbers of articles and trying to figure out what could have happened. And it's too convoluted to just like Haiti's entire history. Haiti's mm -hmm. entire history is so convoluted from the beginning when it gained its independence and then was isolated from the rest of the world. And then from isolation had to pay reparations mm -hmm. to the people who enslaved mm -hmm. them. So it's, it's historically, Haiti is so convoluted and has so many different issues that I don't think we could, we could talk for days and never, mm -hmm. and never get into it. Now, from the immigration standpoint, um, we, I, I mean, we all probably were here when, when Cubans were being, um, when there was a wet foot, dry foot policy, right? And obviously Haitians have been, from an immigration standpoint, quite frankly, discriminated against. And there's an anti-Black, and I think the pastor touched on it a little bit, there's an anti-Black uh, how can I say, culture in terms of immigration, right? Um, who are the people who are getting deported the most? As the doctor said, Haitians are still getting deported every day. <laughs> um, it's not, it, it hasn't stopped because the president was assassinated. It hasn't stopped because um, there's insecurity in this country and there's a level of anti-blackness in our community um, in the immigration community, there's a level of invisibility for mm -hmm. black immigrants um, um, faces. Um, you know, so many of us have gone through whatever immigration process we needed to go through um, to either become permanent residents or, or, or citizens of the United States. But we have to, you know, confront the fact that, you know, Haitians are majority black and the anti-blackness and the level of white supremacy in in our laws and whatever you may want to call it have an impact on how the laws are are um are spread out through different nationalities i mean we have to admit that if we want to move past uh these issues regarding Haiti and how we can help Haiti. I ultimately think the solution for Haiti is with the Haitian people. Mm -hmm. I I don't personally don't feel, I want to help in any way I can, but I don't live that poverty that the pastor talked about. I don't live that um, desperation that my mother felt that she had to uh, come across the oceans in a rickety boat to give us the opportunity to succeed here in the United States. I don't live that and I don't feel that as much as the people who are living in Haiti. So I think it needs to be a Haitian solution for those in Haiti and then we figure out how we can help. Now, what's the answer to that? Like I said, I know some things, but I don't know everything. everything. So that I don't have the answer to. Okay. okay. Allow me to say this. It is no accident that 800,000 800, people have been able to come across the border since Biden has been in office from South America and Mexico. It is no accident that the Cubans came in. My college teachers were all Cubans who came in uh, after Castro took over. But when Haitians come to the same water, they were turned around and made them drown trying to come in. But other people walk freely and come in and we said, we got to help save you from your people. Well, help, help save me from my people. Right. If my problem is in Haiti, then you ought to help save me from my people. Let me come over too. Mm -hmm. But that is not the way it is. Every day we're trying to get a letter from somebody, an affidavit for somebody. 
But if you're from India, there's no problem. There's no, there's no problem. 800 uh, people of India every day are cleared to come in. They say they export brains. Mm. But then for our people, for our people in Haiti, even as of now, I had a young lady who made it just the day before the assassination. If she hadn't, she wouldn't have made it. Mm -hmm. And we got others who are trying to get over, but we might not ever get them over. Not because of them, but because of the policies of this country. Right. Now, and how, we see, and how we see them. How we see them. them. Mexican men? Because they want to put all of you in jail and still have some common labor out here. Mm -hmm. Because blacks are now demanding right here in Detroit the other day. All the McDonald workers walked out and said, we get $15 an hour. No, you're not, because these people coming home over the border, yeah. they're going to take your job tomorrow. You mm -hmm. go ahead and quit and see what happens to you. I was, trying to understand. Coming in. I, I was trying to understand, you know, and I know we can't go back and, and change history. I, I know that. But what, what was it that has uh, allowed this mistreatment of Haiti, Haiti to continue? What is it that, that these white folks are so fearful of, of this country, that they would allow uh, uh, the manipulation at any, any means necessary to keep Haiti in such an oppressive state? Now, I, I, I know we don't, we don't have all the answers, but, but doggone it, there has to be, it has to start from somewhere. You well, know? Bobby, let, let me take a stab at that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. go ahead. Uh, Bobby, if I may. Uh, as Pastor uh, Smith mentioned before, there's there's a, a power in desperation. Um, I think that countries do benefit when a certain people are kept weak. Um, if if Haiti was a country that was stable, many Haitians wouldn't be here, and many would leave. Many that work uh, the 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 laboring um, positions, such as the McDonald positions, we. Um, cleaning positions, the so on and so forth. Uh, many people have already prepared their homes back in Haiti to retire and are unable to do so because of the instability. How does that contribute? It does contribute to areas that are more powerful. So I do think, like you mentioned earlier, we don't know all the answers, but there are some things we need to look at, at a, in a bigger picture about how a country that doesn't have one single gun store has all these guns, how did they get there? Who's funding them to get them in? And are the gentlemen who are using those guns to kill people who have much less than they do, Do what are they getting for it? Is it a meal? Is it a few meals for their whole family? And there's no saying what you would do in a position of desperation. As many, I always say that I've never been hungry. You know, I'm actually overweight. So. I can't say that if I've been starved long enough, I wouldn't, you know, you just don't know. You would have to be in the position. So, so there's, a, there's a lot that we need to look at. And let, let me say this. Um, yes, we cannot change history, but we could learn from history. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the situation in Haiti, one of the reasons that the European powers did not want, uh, from 1804, from becoming the first independent country, Keep in mind, the first African country that was free was not until the 1900s. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other country that had gotten their independence, I think, came in in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about over a hundred some odd years mm -hmm. that they would not allow the free. So with Haiti going back to Frederick Douglass and Nat Turner and people like this of understanding the power of what black folks have um, were able to put together to have a free state. So they were determined to make sure that no one else is going to be allowed to rise up again like that. And so that's why that embargo, that isolation was put under Haiti. And this is a country that was not allowed to trade with anybody else all these years. They were on their own. Mm -hmm. They were not allowed to but in the meantime, they were being ripped apart as far as taken from them. So when you go back and you go into the 1900, when you mentioned with regards to the US, um, and again, I'm not an historian, 
so I'm not quoting specific dates, but I believe it was 1915 when they came in and went into Haiti. So for that period of time, again, the United States, when they were leaving afterwards, they left certain people who did not look like a Haitian people in charge. And this is what we're looking at right now from generation to generation, as I believe um, the attorney had mentioned before that you have a small group of folks who handles, who, who, who have the wealth of the country, who have control of the wealth. And so these folks are making sure from generation to generation that they are still in charge and keeping you in check. And when you have anybody that comes in and trying to do contrary of not just being a puppet, you are going to be eliminated, you are going to be taken off, and this is why we are looking at the present situation that we're in right now in Haiti and continues that way unless the people will rise. And I believe the people, the power of the people, you know, is um, the voice of God is the power of the people, the the, the, you know, definitely. And people right now are demanding and saying, we want justice. We want to see change. And this is what has to take place. Yes, it stands with the, um, the Haitian folks that had to take stock and try to change matters. But until others leave us alone to try to do what we can do for ourselves, because that confusion keep coming in telling you what you can and cannot do because the moment that they see that you're trying to do something positive they're going to talk to somebody else and say you need to counter that you need to repudiate that and this is what's happening that we have that that fight going back and forth within our own people the reason we haven't had any trouble out of japan or germany is because we gave them bread and butter we rebuilt their countries mm -hmm. We fix it so they can eat. When people can eat, they don't want to fight. They don't. Hitler had people fighting. In Japan had people fighting because they had hungry people. But we have intentionally, deliberately, purposely, systematically kept the people in Haiti hungry. So no, they can't just get out of it themselves hungry. But if we feed them, if we put our factories in there, if we turn <laughs> Uh, manufacturing over to them. We put plant. We built 119 factories in Indonesia just in the 80s. 119 factories. Every car right now is a foreign car. It's a joke about a foreign car because I live in Detroit where the cars are made. I'm in the factories. I see the cars come out. Every part, every attachment, every attachment to that body comes from Indonesia now. 119 plants. Every light every uh, lock, every every chrome symbol, every little part, every part, and they attach to the back and to the front some plastic mold, and they call one a Cadillac, and they call the other one a Chevrolet. But every, every part comes from Indonesia. If we do the same thing for Haiti, we do the same thing for Haiti, then we wouldn't be having a problem. And well, speaking, of, speaking of the economics of Haiti, uh which it sounds as if there isn't much resources there but it is a resource plentiful uh island uh one of the things i've always found interesting uh is it a concerted effort that we don't build haiti as the tropical paradise that that we do uh, the Dominican Republic. I mean, it, it's just crazy that we think one half of the island is plush uh, resort area and the other side is desolate. I mean, when in fact there is, there is a, I, I've heard that there were companies, I uh, think a great uh, Intel, one of the top technology companies, recently had their stockholders uh, retreat in Haiti, of all places. So I'm asking, uh, you know, in terms of those people who visit places, why is it that we don't consider Haiti a, a place to visit or, or for that resort? Well, if I can, if I can jump in here as far as um, when it comes to tourism, tourism and culture, mm -hmm. um, Haiti is one of the most beautiful places, and you'll see there's so much that you'll find, it, like you'll find awe in, in terms of 
treatments for medicines, things that you could be taught by someone who can't even read about um, things that they've been taking since they were children. And now they're 87 and they look wonderful. You know, certain teas, the way they live their lives about how they stay out of people's business and they're not into arguing and stress, just things that you can learn from having a one hour conversation. And these are people who have dealt with poverty, yes, but who've humbled themselves to such a degree that they've formed a peace around them that they wouldn't give away for anything. And it's like a well-kept secret. So what we do here is keep everyone focused on the, the fighting, the gang violence, the, the drugs, the this, the that. And nobody asks the questions about, well, what, why? Like you just mentioned, why would people send their, you know, a, a huge company or organization like that send their people to hate? It's a well-kept secret. And once you hear that there's so many guns out in the street and whatever, we're not gonna just say, okay, let's jump and go have a vacation there, but go to the people who know, let's get the information, let's support each other, let's have these conversations. Let me, uh, let me put this in. The major problem is that the Haitians demand that if you're gonna come to Haiti and you're gonna get rich our Haitian partner is going to get rich too. Mm -hmm. They demanded for many years 50% partnership. Like you think ain't nothing wrong with that with Detroit. Detroit was pushed into bankruptcy because under Mayor Coleman Young, it was demanded 25% partnership. If you came in, you got money from the city to develop, then you had to have a 25% Detroit black partner. After he went out, Mayor Archer kept it 12%. The new young man came in and said, well, it, it's, it's not right uh, to have quotas and make people take on partners they don't want. So we're not going to have uh, this uh, partnership thing anymore. So today, guess what? We have finished over 30,000 new apartment units and new businesses coming in in just the last six years. And there are 8,000 apartments being built right now. And the people who live here and stayed here and kept the city so that these people could come back, they're not a part of it at all. Development is being done. And, and of course, we, we're just simply left out. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons Haiti has suffered. We could have better hotels. We could have better everything in Haiti if we didn't say, you need a Haitian partner. And I don't think it's nothing wrong with it because you're going to suck the blood out of the community. Where's, where's it going to come from? Here's another situation with regards to Haiti. Right now, when you're looking at the Haitians living abroad are keeping the country alive by sending money to their loved ones in Haiti. Right. So therefore, Haitians in the diaspora are helping the economy. And the reason I have seen the chats that somebody had mentioned, one of our friends, with regards to um, the way that we are portrayed. Hollywood and mm -hmm. everywhere else shows you that they are a bunch of savages. So therefore, that's not the place for you to go. As you mentioned, the, with DR, okay, um, the hotel chains and so on, the same way that they go into remote areas and open up certain um, countries uh, as far as to spring up new hotels and everything. We'll do the same thing in Haiti. What tends to happen again, the thugs, that when you as a business person goes down and say you wanna do well, so they're gonna make sure that you fail because you want to put the people in a positive light. That's not what they want to be shown. That's not what they wanna display. But when it comes to carnival time, if we give them music and let them dance, let them get drunk and keep them quiet, all right? You Nine months later, everybody else be happy and so on because you have carnival babies, you have everything else. So again, the people, keep them dumb, keep them partying and so on. And I'm not stereotyping by saying that because that happens throughout the Caribbean with regards to keeping people docile and so on. And after a while, you, you are asleep. you basically not awakened, understanding what needs to take place uh, for the good of your family as far as living a better life. 
So now if we start, and um, again, I've seen folks and I know of others who have learned from their ways in the United States and other people abroad, they go back to home and try to start out businesses in no time they will be bankrupt because they would rip them apart because of what they are trying to do. So therefore discouragement steps in and the same people who are saying that I've been saying from generation to generation, they still maintain the powers that they wanted to have because they don't want you to come in and educate the people. This is what's happening right now. So you have people in hostage, you have people in, in crisis that they stay in there because they need your help. But in the same token, they're not allowing you to make the changes necessary because they benefit from keeping us down. That's what it's all about. Right. And I, if I can, if I can just add on quickly to that, I think that that's the, the kind of the theme, right? The people who are in power or the people who have control of the economy um, don't necessarily, it's to their benefit not to have Haiti open up and be this beautiful, I mean, Haiti's a beautiful island. I love yes. going to, to Haiti. Um, but people don't know this because, you know, and I, I hate to point fingers and, and, and say that, but we have to be honest about it. The powers that be, the pe people that benefit from it, whether it's um, American government and the powers that be in the United States, as well as those people who own uh, most of the economy um, in Haiti, they w they're not going to benefit from um from Haiti's development. As a matter of fact, they benefit from the instability of Haiti. Yes. And so until that can change and that can be rooted out, I don't know that, you know, I, maybe it's us Haitian Americans who, who have to do something, but it really needs to change from within the system because there's a level of corruption there within the system that permeates it and keeps it going and going and going and the people who benefit from it are not going to let it go that easily they will not mm -hmm. and i, I want to ask though how you know are these people actually haitian i mean it's one thing about you know colorism and so on and so haitians come in every shade and light just like any other culture but are they like how do they stomach the, the the suffering of the people, you know, um, you have women so traumatized, young girls, like he, uh, Dr. Patrick mentioned, um, the, the carnival babies, you know, people when they're excited and having some form of joy after spending, you know, the majority of their life just seeing darkness, you know, and being miserable. I don't know about you all, but being without the sun, without, without light all, you know, for hours on end can suppress your spirit and you, those type of things in, encourage all other things. So you have these babies being born to young children. You have the molestation, you have all this abuse. And now you have people, uh, um, I read a, a story recently of a 19 year old young girl who killed her child so that that child wouldn't have to suffer the hunger that she suffered. Now imagine the, the, the psychological impact of that and also not having the support you need or understanding and how that can raise and animalistic type behavior within that individual. And that spread to the people around them. There are issues with rumor in Haiti where people will just make up stories about you to make money off of you or the whole issues of um, the, the, the religious beliefs and warring. You have a people completely se separated by their beliefs and based on what they've learned from people who have, the people that enslaved them which demonalized a lot of the things that were based on nature and beauty, that creates a separation and that that keeps us weak. But that's, that also helps the people that are suppressing us to so keep them fighting, keep them fighting amongst each other with, about what they have, what they believe in, what color they are, they are, what family they came from, what part of the country they came from. Just keep them in that web and keep them weak. So like uh, Ms. Jean mentioned before, I do believe a lot of the power is within the people themselves making a decision to untie themselves with the mind, um, the mind bondage, and also getting the support from us in terms of 
supplying them with the things they need, like the food, like the work, and so on and so forth. You know, I, I wish everybody can see some of these comments that are coming in from people who are watching us. Uh, there, there are a couple in particular. The last one that Gary uh, Timmer, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the conundrum, that word, the big pot, is that the, uh, uh, the problem is that the corruption is nurtured from the crib to the grave. But also, uh, Kenny Webster out of Tallahassee says, uh, currently we have Gary Shipman. Gary Shipman is a local, well, he's a local, uh, uh, well, he's from Fort Lauderdale. He lives, his family is from here. His daughter is competing uh, in, in Taekwondo in the Olympics, and she wants to represent Haiti. And now the officials are questioning her because she wants to represent Haiti. You know, and, and I mean, the hatred is still being spewed uh, concerning this country, this beautiful country. And I think what 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 has what has created this angst, this this need to smash this country let's be realistic that this country told french to get they out of the country you know we're going to take care of ourselves and they did it and 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 and, and they're therefore they are still being punished uh, from outside sources because of what they did to this white uh, establishment uh, you know let's let's call it what it is it's, it's not just something new that has been occurring this has been going on for a long time and, and because america black america is beginning to think globally we begin we're beginning to create and connect the dots that the the fear of a black world not just uh, well the fear of a black planet has caused <laughs> when they can the suppression of a people and y'all's governor y'all's governor your governor. The sacrificing to it. Yeah. All right. Don't give me the Let me, uh, <laughs> let me address the brother uh Gary um Timmer. 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 Mm -hmm. Sixty minutes came to Detroit and spent nine weeks with me, many hours of film, trying to get me to say that Detroit went bankrupt because black people cannot govern themselves. And this is what they want us to believe about Haiti. But believe me, there are always outside forces that come in to cause the problem. Now, Detroit, when Mayor Young left, when Mayor Young left after 35 years of black governance, we had a rainy day fund with over $60 million in it. Everything was set up. But then the powers to be in Lansing decided they wanted to take over. So they stopped our revenue sharing. They owe us $700 million right now. And because of the charisma that some black men have, like Muhammad Ali and people who were just born with it, where Mayor Young and the young man that went to prison, they were just born with charisma. They can ask people to do anything. They can ask them to substitute salt, you know, for their sugar. And people will do it. Mayor Young could have us raise our taxes on ourselves any time he asked, sometimes twice a year, so that we would not go bankrupt. As Sachs left, Neiman Marcus left, Holiday Inn left, the Hilton left, everybody left so our tax base would dry up and we would have to almost starve to death. But we made it until they set in a law saying you can't raise taxes on yourself. No municipality in Michigan now can raise their own taxes. It's got to come out of Lansing. So if you take revenue sharing from us, from the federal money, then you take uh, the power of us to raise taxes on ourselves, what could happen in Detroit? Well, the same thing was going on like the Pony Express was replaced by airmail. You know, the, 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 the stage coach was replaced by the train. Men working in the factories were replaced by the robots. That's what, that's what happened. 56,000 men laid off permanently in 1982. In 07, 125,000 men laid off permanently because robots took their job. They could take the robots, make five times as many cars with fewer men. 
and this is the same thing that's going on in Haiti. It's 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 not something that the people are just doing to themselves. It's happening because they are just there. If they were actually left alone, they probably would just make it and make it a nice place on their own. Yes. But there are outside forces that contribute and laws that contribute, systemic laws. Laws put in place to make sure it happens. Go back again to the Monroe Doctrine. The United States promised to keep Haiti in suppression so that France and no European country would ever have to come over to fight again. And they're good at it, and they've been doing it. Amen. Oh, nigger, Roger, and uh, oh man, I thought you said everything in there. I thought you said everything in there. But you remember Iran Contra and all this kind of yeah. stuff, and yeah. training the guns and stuff. We, we, every, everything in this hemisphere is controlled by this government. Yeah. Most you know, and they got laws to keep and, their way. Yeah. And Pastor, this is why, again, that I'm saying right now, you cannot take this assassination lightly. No. You just say, how do you assassinate the president of a country? And we're talking about those European powers and everybody else that have intelligence going on throughout the world of knowing so without giving the authority. There are certain decisions that are taking place that it cannot take place unless somebody say, okay, I will turn my face. I will turn my, uh, uh, you know, I will turn my, I didn't see anything. Yeah. I didn't hear anything. So right now, this is what we are faced with, that we are looking at the current events and the people demand and wants to see justice. And we have to see where do we go from here as far as not just educating, but as far as action. It's going to take action. It's going to take more than just CPS as far as temporary protective status. All right, it takes more than that for us to get people to the next step. Right now, we're going to have Haitians are not just coming to the United States; they are seeking refuge wherever they can. People are going to Chile. They're going to Brazil. They're going to Germany. They're going everywhere to say we have to go someplace else. And this is what's going to happen. The European power is going to have. To say, hey, you need to keep your neighbors in check. So something's going to have to be done for us to understand. Let the Haitians survive. Let them live and do something to take it to the next step and living life, a normal life, as best as they can. You know, you know we can't let the church you know, off. Either. We can't let the church off. I'll say this and, and, and be quiet. I'm not talk too much. No. <laughs> the church has failed the people in Haiti. Mm -hmm. When the earthquake happened in 2010, there were 88,000 missionaries on the ground in Haiti. If you got an average of 88,000 to 110,000 missionaries in Haiti on the, any given day, why is it so bad? If the church is the salt of the earth and light of the world, the Ooh. city on the hill, if the gospel is a liberator, why are they still so oppressed? Colonialism is still real, Pastor. Very, very Colonialism. Real. Listen, when I, I went to an orphanage in Haiti where they were so amused that I knew the names of some of the children. And one preacher could fellow asked me, how did you learn their names so easily? Mm -hmm. I said, what do, you, what do you mean? I said, you don't know their names? He said, no. I said, well, how do you call him? He said, I said, hey, boy. He didn't care said, enough to. Hey, boy. And listen, the children had never been downtown. They had never seen the White House. They had never seen the statues of two sons, of Jean Claude. They, 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 they didn't know nothing about Desiree, nothing. Their first time ever going to town is when we came in and, and took them down. Wow. One of one of the viewers, she said, she said this, uh, Ms. Kinsler. She said, "Shoot the churches. They don't care about home. How in the hell are they going to help somebody out of the country?" <laughs> well, tell us she picked the wrong church. She ain't got much to <laughs> She's in Detroit. Don't shoot all of them. Don't shoot all of them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, well, it's called mission drift. 
The YMCA started off as a Bible study club. What is it now? You walk in there with a Bible, they'll throw you out. Yeah. Yeah. Pawn shop started off as emergency relief centers for folk who needed a temporary break. You go in there now, it's all about taking because the interest they charge, you can't afford it. Okay. This mission drift. Harvard and Yale started off as Bible studying seminaries to make Jesus known to the world. But you don't hear nothing about Jesus at either one of them now. Mm. And the church has done the same thing. We become cathedral builders. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we build $85 million churches because that's what the people are paid for. Mm -hmm. That's what they're paid for. I have people that will not, every, every, every month we send money to Haiti, every month we send money to Africa. And there are people who will not give for that. But if I said we need new carpet, no problem. Mm -hmm. If I said we need new uh, lighting, no problem. Yeah. You have to feel uh, people as a people to care. Uh -huh. Yeah, humanize. You have to humanize them to, to care. If you've been labeled as poor, or you know, I don't know if some of you've ever noticed how you know, I, you'd be surprised how many average people don't realize that Africa is not a country, and yeah. that you'd be shocked, and that the whole um, view of the white savior, you know, the they'll show the young child with the flies and screaming and the swollen belly and stuff that that. There's so much more to Africa than than that. Than that, it's, of course. Think in Haiti, you know, uh, you will be out as a professional, walk in the room and start a conversation. And I actually speak Creole, and I'll switch when I find someone who does, and they'll be shocked. And that's here. So that's mm -hmm. so that's here. That's that image. You we have to be seen as human, as the beautiful people the, that we are and learn from one another. So it, it's so, so important for people with the platforms, the media platforms, um, and us with the, you know, the average community person to support and to keep supporting each other and to, to, to network and keep networking. Because once that starts building, you know, the, the investors ship will shift at any point when they see all the, the, the viewers are going towards this area. Then all of a sudden they start thinking about the narrative. Like maybe we, we should look at this differently. And then all the the Hiltons will start going there and all the it's, they follow the flow of the money. So it, it, it's about what we what we do and how we support each other. Okay. Okay. As the old saying say, each one reach one, each one teach one. Each one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's do this, y'all. I mean, this has been very uh enlightening, and it's only the tip of the iceberg. Yes. Unfortunately, you know, time is not on our side with this. So if we can begin to wrap it up, uh, um, if, if each uh, panelist, if you will, uh, could give uh, a remedy that, that if they can offer uh, a remedy or some, some, some focal point to what we can do to assist in our country, you know, and I'm talking about Haiti. Uh, to assist our country uh, in, in, in the predicament that they're in. Uh, and if you would, if you can type into the box, into the chat box, how we can reach you, you know, uh, we, need to, we need to allow our people to see that. But if we can begin to wrap up uh, with a solution, uh, just one solution, Pastor, don't, you don't have to give us your sermon, just one, you know, what well, we can do. And we're going to save you for last, Pastor Smith. Um, uh, <laughs> ladies, we're gonna do ladies first, and we'll go alphabetically. Uh, J before P. Miss Ruth. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm the lucky first person um, <laughs> to come up with a solution. All right. Just one. Baby. Just, one. <laughs> Just one. Okay. Well, I think what we're doing here is a, a great start. Um, I think bridging the gap between. Um, Haitian Americans and African Americans is important in learning to understand one another. And then from there, um, I think it opens our ears open, our eyes open more, and we're more willing to um, understand each other and work towards a collective solution together. But I, I think um, bridging the gap amongst all of us is a very important solution. Okay, great. Shelly? 
Um, I personally um, believe that taking the time um, within the communities, the grassroots communities to start, whether it be one organization that you feel that may stand up to the, the standards that you have and that support it, you know, give that, give that money, that $5, that $20, you know, get the information, get that, that community, the, the organization that you trust and start feeling comfortable and not focusing on the gossip that that's out there because, you know, we have that amongst organizations where they're warring against each other focus on helping like truly not just you know speaking to what could be better and what's wrong with those people but actually doing something and getting informed about where that money is going how is it actually helping someone keeping ourselves educated and before i get off you know again i can't thank you enough bobby um i would love to take the opportunity to um uh, extend our condolences to the to the people of Haiti and to the Moyes family. I don't know um, what made you think to do this, but being the, the angel that you are, I, I thank you for allowing us this mm -hmm. opportunity. And like Ms. Jean said, it is this, it's the beginnings, it's the conversations that um, that is the beginning of the movement that needs to happen right now where all eyes are on Haiti. And thank you so much. No, no mm -hmm. Patrick? Doctor, yes, yes, Patrick mm -hmm. is fine. Uh, <laughs> thank you once again to the West Side Gazette and your staff. As we um, been in the trenches for years, understanding the battle continues, and this is why um, the activism is real. Mm -hmm. Empowerment is a key. Mm -hmm. We need to empower our people to understand not just economic empowerment political empowerment, because this is why right now, if we want to see changes take place in Haiti, it starts here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And the only way they're going to listen to you in the United States is either if you have economic might or you have a say so that you could affect the pocket in other ways. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way that we could do, whether it's to ours. So, the people must be um, educated to understand what it is that hate is going through. And we get on that pulpit, we get on that um, loudspeaker, any which way that we can, and we could learn from others. But more importantly, we have to come together to see how do we teach one another that the time is now, we can continue to sit by and just sitting by as far as being spectators. Mm -hmm. It is real, everybody's affected. And the moment that you start saying, well, you know, like the old saying with the mousetrap, hey, there's a mousetrap, there's a mousetrap. Well, it's coming for you too, mm -hmm. all right? You're next. Mm -hmm. So more or less, it's time for you to just say, hey, my brother, my sister, what can I do to help? And we could work together to make the changes necessary in Haiti. And I think it starts now, it starts in this country. Thank you again for this opportunity. And this is only the beginning because I think we should have this again and again and again. And I like to plug, one of the things that I do constantly is um, on a regular basis, we do what we call a United Leadership Circle. And it's just giving people a platform about civic engagement. Mm -hmm. The average person, wherever you may be, right now we're in Broward County, some folks don't even know how the governmental structure is. They don't know what what does the commissioner do? What does a, you know? What does the government can and cannot do? So those are the type of things that we could have discussion and have conversation among each other. But more importantly, we are sitting down and planning strategically and working and doing things and helping each other out. Thank you again for the opportunity. Good night and thank God bless everybody. Okay. Thank you. Pastor Smith. Well, again, I said bread and butter. Desperation is a problem. It's, it's and, and most, like I say, most people have not experienced hunger, so they don't know. But all I do is ask you to pick up your history books, and you will see where we sent bread and butter, um, and not uh, bullets and guns, um, things changed. You know, Africa is messed up because we're always giving somebody some tanks and some guns. 
The Middle East is messed up because Russia give one side guns, the United States give the other side guns. But bread and butter will solve the problem. You're not going to get a man to do things. Uh, well, just take a man who got a good job and a good family and everything. He's not going to go out here and do some silly act of violence to put him in jail for three nights and cost him his job. Mm -hmm. But a man who has nothing to lose, nothing to lose, you're going to always have problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have kept these people hungry. We keep keeping them hungry. And as long as that is going on, one side, there, there are 18 families in Haiti who are worth more than a million dollars. They're, 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 they're millionaires. Those people are always on the opposite side of the politicians or trying to control the politicians. And this is where all the street fighting and all this kind of stuff come in. And most people don't even know why they're there. They know they are paid to be there. Perry? Can't hear you, Perry. Nope. You still can. You can't hear. Can't hear. Okay. Okay. All right. Keep going. Okay, Shelly. Okay. Yes, Bobby. After after I wrap up, could you say in a Creole, uh, "God bless Haiti," and may we learn how to feed them when I get finished? Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, I, I just want to say, you know, thank you to, to everybody. You know, and 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 no, it's not just it's not just me or the West Side Gazette. It's us. It is a community affair, and until we begin to think globally from a black perspective, we're not gonna get anywhere. You know, and, and I'm saying we have to stop believing what other people tell us. And I'm gonna use an example of crabs in a barrel. I crab, I go crabbing. Crabs in a barrel are not trying to pull each other down as some people would want you to believe. Crabs in a barrel create a bridge for the other crabs to crawl out. So if we begin to think like crabs in a barrel, but we need to create a bridge so we can grab onto each other to pull ourselves out, then we can get to where we need to be. Yes, we need to address these issues with our government. We need to apply pressure on our government from President Biden on down to make them understand that Haiti is just as good, if not better than Cuba. You know, and I'm not saying that from a derogatory standpoint. I'm saying that from a human standpoint. Mm -hmm. Until America is able to look at all of us. Oh, I kind of got excited. That's if, America, yeah. if, America, <laughs> That's so good. if America is unable to look at all countries as, as being of equal value, then damn it, we are in the wrong country. Mm -hmm. So I want to say God bless you to all. And, and if, and if Shelly, if you could take us out on that, I certainly would appreciate it. Um, thank you again, Bobby. And um, definitely, like I say, you, you've done so much and are continuing to do so much. Um, the Haitian people, the Haitian community out there, all the associations that are doing so much work, um, Dean Law Group, the National Black Nurses Association, the Haitian American Nurses Association, um, Little Haiti Cultural Center, I mean, you can go on and on. There are so many people that are doing so much work, the politicians, the, the churches that are fighting, because again, behind the scenes, you don't know who's trying and being um, you know, held back by whether it's um, economic means or whatever. So may God bless all of them. May God bless our country, our people. Que bon Dieu toujours béni nous, que bon Dieu toujours ouvert porte pour nous, ouvert yeux nous, pour nous ouvert que let nous pas ka wè lòt comme on moun let nous pas remet tête nous d'abord nous remet lòt nous nous mettez tête nous ensemble pour nous joindre une solution on rien pas ka marcher même le on bagaille commencer l'a ka craser parce que l'a trop faible pour col mais ensemble nous ka fait toute bagaille que bon Dieu toujours béni nous ouvert yeux nous fait nous remet lòt apprendre lòt 
et nous même tout pour nous apprendre tête nous pour nous arriver côté bon Dieu besoin nous arriver parce que ça arriver là c'est soit les continuer comme on ba, on bagaille qui passer le continuer même gens au lui même il vient mener changement que Haïti mérité en tant que un peuple qui bénit un peuple un peuple qui commencer pour même pour nous même nous ca gagner pour nous à l'aise gens nous à l'aise là wow Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Good night, all. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.